When you are lonely, take a look inside and see what's missing. In fact, that's a really great exercise. You know, write down all the things that are missing. And you'll probably write down that you don't have people in your life that you feel that you can trust or connected to or people who care about you or you find yourself alone, you know, not engaged. Whatever is on that list, I bet you if you go back and with each one of those bullet points, ask yourself if you are being that with yourself for yourself. And you'll probably get a lot of good information from that because there's a saying that everywhere you go, there you are. And how you do one thing, you do everything. If your relationship with yourself is missing, then even if you did have that mate, even if you were hanging out with your girlfriends or friends, I bet you that there would be this lull, this emptiness, this something's missing as soon as they walked away. Because what's missing is your lack of relationship with yourself. And so it's like just never being able to feed the hunger. You either have to always be busy so that you aren't aware of what happens to you the moment the door shuts and there are no more people. The moment the door shuts and there's no more people, we have to look at what happens inside. And what happens inside is the feelings, the things that we have been running from, the unresolved trauma, the shame, the dislike and distrust that we have with ourselves that aren't acknowledged but are absolutely present. All of that shows up. If you think that you are a person that doesn't attract friends easily or people think you're weird, people thought I was weird my entire life. They still think I'm weird. They still think I'm weird. The difference between me today and me back when they first started calling me weird and it hurt my feelings is I'm so glad that I am weird because I love my weirdness. I have a rich relationship with myself. So what does that mean? What does that look like to have a rich relationship with yourself? It means that I am interested in me and how I feel. You know, how often do you take time to actually ask yourself how you're feeling? A lot of times people don't want to ask themselves that question because they know the answer is going to make them sad. And so here's what happens. You push away asking that question because you know you're going to get an answer that you don't want to hear and that answer is going to make you sad. Then you're going to be sad and therefore you're going to have to push that sadness away and it just becomes this cycle. But when you take time and you simply say, okay, I'm, I'm sad. I'm wishing that there were more in my life that I could feel excited about. I wish that I had better relationships. If you take note of those things that you wish for, you use those things to now make a wish because the moment you acknowledge what's missing, we have a roadmap now for going after the filling in of what's missing. So, you know, if you don't have the kind of relationships that you want in your life, now you get to ask an effective and empowering question. And EEQs are so, so good because they're so simple. An effective and empowering question is asking a how, what, where, who 
question. Never ask a why question. Why questions will just leave you in a loop. So what that means it looks like is if you ask, why don't I have any friends? You have basically asked the universe, which is this supercomputer. And the moment you ask the universe a question, your higher power is listening. Whatever name you want to use for your higher power, it is listening. And because we are loved by our higher power, the questions that we ask are the questions that will be answered. So why, you know, don't I have the relationships in my life that I want? The answers that are going to come back are you whine. <laughs> you know, you are needy. People feel like saying hello to you is going to take them into an hour conversation. You're going to learn things about yourself that don't help you move from your stuck place to the place that you desire. And so the better question, the who, what, where, how question is, okay, so how can I have the relationships that I yearn for? You asked, how can I have the relationships that I yearn for? What must I do to have rich relationships in my life? Where must I look or where do rich relationships come from? Who might be a rich relationship that I can experience and learn from and practice with? Every one of those questions feels good because it opens your heart and makes you feel like, oh, okay, there's a possibility here. And that possibility makes all the difference in the world. When we are feeling the loneliness, the something's missing, the disconnect from self is what is lonely. It's what's painful. But you say, how? What must I do? You should do it right this moment. Say, how? Can I have more of what I want in my life? The, the simple question within that question is the notion that it's possible and it's possibility that opens us up. So if you think about yourself like your best friend, you can always navigate what you should be doing with yourself to build that healthy, strong, resilient relationship because you would listen to your friend, right? If your friend was going through something or if your friend was sitting there feeling like she was all left out, you would show up and you would say, how do you feel? If you're a good friend, you know, well, if you've got those friends that are running from themselves, they don't want to hear anything that you have to say because it might trigger in them their own need to stop and be with and recreate their relationship with themselves. But in your imagination, what does a good friend do? In your imagination, what does a good parent do? Now that you have those ideas in your imagination, what can you do with yourself? Being a friend to yourself that activates these ideas that you have just identified. We underestimate how important we are. And when, when we understand that, that who we are inside and how we are thinking about ourselves creates our experience. If we are thinking about ourselves 
from this place of not being good enough, we're going to take that everywhere we go. Even if we put on a front, even if we're putting on the front that we, you know, got it all together and we got our makeup on and we got these fly clothes on and the, the jewelry is, you know, banging and all of that. But if inside, we are carrying the, I'm not good enough. That's what enters the room with all of that sparkle. What is in the space, what is vibrating in the space is how we feel about ourselves. And so the most important relationship in our lives is the one that we are having with ourselves. And the power of an EEQ, an effective and empowering question is, it gives us permission. In fact, it instructs us to begin to ask the kinds of questions that can move us towards the life that we want. And just asking the question starts us on the path of feeling better. It feels good to ask a question like, how, how can I achieve that? Because a part of you is in the curiosity, it's in the energy of it being possible. Now you have to be careful and make sure that your how isn't driven by your surviving self. Like, well, how can I do that? Because that how can I do that is actually saying, I'm not good enough. You know, that can't happen for me. So if you are using your how like a why, <laughs> then that how is not going to serve you. When it comes to creating the life we want, it starts with wanting to have a powerful relationship with ourselves. If we have a powerful relationship with ourselves, we walk into the grocery store and people may not know exactly what it is that they're looking at, but they see something that is alive. They see something that's brighter than a lot of the other people who are in that store. They see a person who has purpose because your purpose is you. Your purpose is honoring yourself. Your purpose is recognizing that you are the answer that you're looking for. And you begin to feel empowered because you, you really do get that when you ask that EEQ, something greater than you is listening. So you're always walking with the potentiality of being responded to. I'm loving you. <laughs>